During the 1930s, a new appreciation of Arkansas's culture developed. Musicologists and other historians realized the value of folk culture preserved in the Delta and Ozark regions. The 1930s would see an emergence of festivals, recordings, and more influential radio programs. Taking Eck Robertson's lead, more Ozark string bands emerged on recordings in the 1930s. Searcy County natives Abby and Absie Morrison recorded Ozark Waltz and Dry and Dusty on June 3, 1930 in Memphis. Others, like Dr. Smith's champion hoss hair pullers, George Edgen's corn dodgers, and Ashley's melody men carried the string band tradition into the 1930s. I want to be a cowboy sweetheart. I want to learn to rope and to ride. I want to ride on Patsy Montana moved back to Arkansas in 1932, and in 1933 went with her brothers to the Chicago World's Fair to enter the family watermelons into a world's biggest watermelon contest. Although Patsy's brothers did not win the watermelon competition, she landed a female singing role on the WLS National Barn Dance. In 1935, Patsy Montana recorded her hit song, I Want to Be a Cowboy Sweetheart, which went on to become the first million-selling record by a female artist. Country, gospel, and rock and roll Hall of Famer Johnny Cash was born on February 26, 1932 in Kingsland, Arkansas. He moved with his family in 1935 to the Dice Colony, established as part of President Franklin Roosevelt's New Deal to aid hundreds of impoverished Arkansas families. Johnny Cash would spend much of his childhood singing in the fields while picking cotton. Born in Pike County in 1936, Glenn Campbell was another musician who crossed the lines of genre. Campbell got his start as a studio musician and went on to have a commercially successful solo career into the 21st century. At the Cotton Club in the 1930s, Rosetta Tharp scandalized some of her church-going fans when she joined Lucky Millinder's band and recorded secular material, including the title, I Want a Tall Skinny Papa and Rock Me, in addition to her usual gospel. By the 1950s and 1960s, she'd influenced such performers as Isaac Hayes, Elvis Presley, Etta James, Jerry Lee Lewis, Bob Dylan, Odetta, and fellow Arkansas Johnny Cash and Sleepy LaBeef. In the mid-1930s, Louis Jordan joined the Chick Webb Orchestra, which is one of the biggest bands in the U.S., even before young Ella Fitzgerald became feature vocalist. By the late 1930s, Jordan began experimenting with smaller combos that could emulate the sounds of the big bands of the era. Louis Jordan and the Timpani Five's recording of A Chicken Ain't Nothing But a Bird in 1940 is an early example of the components that make a Timpani Five hit, a shuffling boogie beat with rhythmic comedic lyrics. Born 1902 in Fort Smith, Alfonso Trent was a jazz pianist of note who became even better known through his Alfonso Trent Orchestra. The band toured the region and performed on radio broadcasts. The orchestra had individual greats such as pianist Alex Hill and Leo Snub Mosley, who invented his own instrument, the slide saxophone. Art Porter was born in Little Rock in 1934. He would become known as a jazz musician and composer of spirituals and classical compositions. Born in Judsonia, Lonnie Alonzo Glossom's versatility on the harmonica gained attention from an early age. Now, folks, I'm going to tell you a little something now about myself. You know, I come from down in Arkansas. He bought his first harmonica for money he saved from picking cotton. The Country Music Hall of Fame cites his 1936 song, Arkansas Hard Luck Blues, as an early example of the talking blues popularized by Woody Guthrie and Bob Dylan. Glosson's relationship with harmonica player Wayne Rainey created a radio program in 1938 on KARK Radio in Little Rock. They also hosted a national show in Cincinnati, Ohio. The two would go on to sell millions of mail-order harmonicas over the airwaves. Solo artist William Lee Big Bill Connolly Brunsey served in the U.S. Army in World War I. After his discharge in 1919, Big Bill Brunsey returned to Arkansas and played around Pine Bluff and Little Rock. His long and prolific recording career began in the 1920s. 
From 1938 to 1940, he recorded with Joshua Altimer, who Brunzi called the best blues piano player I ever heard. Brunzi remains probably the most important link between pre-war and post-World War II blues music. Tell me your turn I've been here and gone Now they tell me your turn I've been here and gone In 1941, a blues music radio program, King Biscuit Time, began broadcasting five days a week on KFFA 1360 AM out of Helena. Back in those days, Helena was a wide open town, a jazz town. Robert Jr. Lockwood was a blues artist in this town, Sonny Boy. Uh, he came from over in uh, Glendora, Mississippi. He used to come over here every single weekend and play the juke joints. They came up to the radio station and they asked me, could you get us on the radio? I can let you have 15 minutes a day, but you have to pay for it. So they went over and, and met Max Moore, the manager of Interstate Grocery Company. They had a boxcar load of flour he tried to get rid of. He said, if I get rid of that flour, I'll spot you from now on. The name of it was King Biscuit Flour. And he said, well, Tell you what, I sold that whole box car load of it. I guess I'm gonna have to sponsor you boys. Mr. Moore, what are we gonna call ourselves? He said, well, why don't you call it the King Biscuit Boys? That's how King Biscuit Flower and the King Biscuit Radio Show got its day. For the first time in its birthplace, blues was heard regularly live over the airwaves, a medium that knew no color line, and recognition of both King Biscuit time and the blues widened. King Biscuit Time has spanned decades and featured such blues greats as Sonny Boy Williamson II, Pine Top Perkins, Houston Stackhouse, Joe Willie Wilkins, James Peck Curtis, and Robert Nighthawk. Host to Elmore James, Johnny Shines, Muddy Waters, Little Walter, Robert Johnson, and countless others. With the success of King Biscuit Time, still more bluesmen were attracted to the region. Others, like James Cotton, Roosevelt Sykes, Forest City Joe Pugh, Fred Below, Willie Big Eyes Smith, Robert Lockwood Jr., Robert Dudlow Taylor, and C. Dale Davis did not have to travel as far to catch the spirit of the time. In the Ozarks, music was being sculpted by different rural circumstances. Music festivals began to appear in places like Eureka Springs as early as 1934, as communities recognized the economic value of celebrating their unique culture. On August 20, 1941, the Stone County Folkways Festival hosted a picnic, an Arkansas Traveler reenactment, and a fiddle and jig contest. Seen here playing the Leaf Ola at the Stone County Folkways Festival is Jimmy Driftwood. Driftwood, a classroom teacher, used music and storytelling as a tool for teaching. He went on to write thousands of songs, including Tennessee Stud and Battle of New Orleans. These traditional styles of music are actively preserved today at the Ozark Folk Center in Mountain View and the Delta Cultural Center in Helena, West Helena. From the Native American ceremonies described in the journals of 16th and 17th century French and Spanish explorers to 18th and 19th century records depicting the American westward movement and the settlement of six unique geographical regions. We learn about the history of music in Arkansas and how the Arkansas soundscape has been influenced by shifts in culture. Native American music, hymns, spirituals, ballads, military, gospel, ragtime, folk, blues, country, symphonic, jazz, rhythm and blues, and rock and roll can all be traced back to Arkansas. With origins, we preserve Arkansas's role in composing these musical styles that would sweep the globe following the universal shift of culture during the advent of World War II.
Lord, they tell me, Joe, turn I've been here and gone. They tell me, Joe, turn I've been here and gone. Then they would look in the yards and they would find wood. They would come in their homes and they'd find everything to eat and everything nice 